Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and, and, and welcome to Harriet Watt University, Malaysia. Uh, I'm going to uh, really share with you uh, uh, basically uh, my, my view on uh, business. Okay, some of you, uh, as we spoke just now, uh, you're not quite sure what you want to do and you, you know, maybe you don't quite sure what business is all about. So my intention here is to share my perspective uh, of what business is. Okay? Uh, and, um, and, and what do you do? What are the choices that you have in terms of what you want to do in business? And then at the end, a little bit about uh, what Harold Watt University has to offer to you all. Okay? So that's, I hope that, that's fine. Uh, and then at the end, if you want to ask some questions, uh, you, you can always ask. Uh, but before that, a little bit of introduction to myself. Uh, because you may ask, so, so why do you want to listen to you? Yeah. Um, so I've, uh, my background actually is in, in accounting. So I've, I've been an accountant now. Oh, I think I started out in the uh, 80s. Okay, so I qualified as an accountant. So I worked in uh, the private sector corporates uh, for a few years, about more or less 10 years. Okay. Then um, later on, I then came to teaching. Okay, so I first taught in uh, Sunway, Sunway College. Uh, so I was there for about 20 years, basically teaching business accounting. Okay? And I was also uh, heading the business school there as well for a short period of time. Um, so, uh, so I've got a little bit of experience in business, okay? uh, and both in, in the corporate sector as well as in education. All right? So uh, I'm going to just share with you my perspective over this last maybe 20, 30 years. Okay? Um, and why do I say change, to change the world? Uh, I believe strongly that uh, business is, is uh, not just about making money. Uh, it, business, if done right, uh, can actually improve our lives. Yeah? So that's the, the message that I want to share with you. Um, so, uh, but let me first start by giving you a, a quick background in terms of Harold Watt University and how is Harold Watt University linked to business itself. Okay? So Harold Watt University, uh, which I joined last year, uh, is actually quite an, an old university. Okay? Uh, at, in 2021, uh, it's going to celebrate two, uh, its bicentennial, which is 200 years. Now, now if you work back 200 years from today, uh, and you think about the time um, Herod was, was set up, which is around the 1800s, right? Uh, that was the time of the first Industrial Revolution. And if you all study and you all know a little bit about history, the first Industrial Revolution was about uh, coming up with, uh, uh, um, uh, what is that, machines. Right? So it was an, a, a transformation between previously it was agriculture and then now it was industry. All right? Agriculture was small, small types of uh, activity, agriculture, farming and everything. And now with machines, you can mass produce a lot of things. All right? So during that time, uh, it feels like now. Okay? If you all don't know now, it's an industrial revolution version 4. Right? where now we are talking about artificial intelligence, robotics, and everything. So during that time, people also felt this transformation and everybody was very nervous. They don't know what's going on. You know, everything is new now and they needed new skills. Okay? So uh, Harold Watt started uh, in 1821, basically as an, an applied uh, school where they teach new skills, new knowledge. Okay? So, so that's the background and since then we have grown Right? And we've got now got a very, very big business school called Edinburgh Business School. Okay? Uh, so that's a background, a little bit of background of um, uh, Harold Watt University and how it's pioneering education. Uh, now we are in uh, three main locations. Our main campus is in Edinburgh. All right? And uh, our, of course, we have a uh, campus here in, in lovely Putrajaya, okay? the wonderful lake that we have. Right? So it's very inspiring every time I come here. Yeah. And we also have um, a, a large campus in Dubai as well. Okay. Now these are our main cities, these are beautiful cities, and, but these are also business cities. Okay. So uh, speaking of business cities, I want to take you to a few cities and tell you a little bit of a story about business, okay. so that you all have this image of business. So um, firstly, um, so I want to introduce you to the world of business. Now if, I want to tell you a story about this city, okay? This city, uh, this picture is taken, uh, I think, around 1980s, okay? And I remember during that time, I visited this city, and it was more or less like that, pretty, very, very uh, small city, and not a lot of buildings. Um, it's actually a city near Hong Kong, 
okay, and it's in China. Okay, and the city's name is Shenzhen. Right? So Shenzhen at that time, I remember it was nothing like this. And then what, what, what I could remember was that there were lots and lots of bicycles everywhere in China at that time. Yeah? So everybody, like every other person, is riding bicycles. You know? It's like a traffic jam of bicycles. Yeah? That was the only thing I remember, but nothing else. Okay? And there's not a lot of activities there as well. Uh, but if I give you a picture of Shenzhen today, okay? this is a picture of Shenzhen today. Okay. Shenzhen today is a metropolis, you know, you see lots and lots of buildings in your high-rise building. And if you know and you've been there, right, you find that Shenzhen is also now famous for one important thing, which is technology, right? So all these artificial intelligence, new, new devices and handphones and everything, they are now, uh, you know, the centre now, the activity now is centred in Shenzhen. Okay. And, and you can see now it's bustling and there's a lot of activity. Right? Shenzhen is said to be the new Silicon Valley of, of China. Okay? Now, similarly to Shenzhen, you will find other cities in China, like Shanghai, is also booming. Okay? Other cities around the world, of course, the more famous one would be New York again. So there's a tons of people, high risk building, lots of activities. Right? That's where all the businesses are. Yeah? And then, um, as I mentioned just now, Dubai. Dubai is a wonder fantastic city. I've not been there, but I'm, you know, you've seen movies and everything, right? So what is, what is abundant there is sand. There are miles and miles of sand, okay? But of course, there's another important thing abundant there, lah, which is oil, right? But what happened is that with oil, oil business, right, they have actually transformed that desert into a very, you know, um, oasis of, of, a, of a fantastic city, right? All this is because of business. Okay? So I just wanted to keep, get you in mind about the fact that business is, you know, it's about places where there's a lot of activity and it's, it's, it's a lot of abundance of things. Right? Um, now, I want to share with you uh, another case, uh, uh, deep diving into businesses. And I want you to see uh, the history of a particular business, one particular business. And I want you to observe uh, the people all right, so that you understand how it is like to be in a business. Okay? And one of the business that I wanted to share with is actually, again, from China. And this is business, is, if you don't know, it's called Alibaba. Okay? And it started by Jack Ma. Okay? And I want to play you a short video. It's about two, three minutes. And this video shows that how it started and what has it become. All right? Now, what I want you to observe is not just, you can observe the history and everything, but what I also want you to observe is how the people, how Jack Ma lead the company, because that's all about business as well. All right, so just let me just play this video.
So my, my point of sharing with you this video is to show you in the condensed form, okay, a little bit about the history of Alibaba. And I thought the history of Alibaba was, was reflective of you know, how business evolved. Right? So a few things I think I just wanted to highlight with you about the, the video. Okay? One is you will notice that uh, you will notice first of all Jack Ma as a business leader. And what a business leader needs to do. He needs to inspire and get people. If you look at the first few scenes, right, he started out with nothing, but he had to bring his team you know, together to actually achieve uh, goals. You have, make, you have to get other people to believe in your vision. Right? So that's what a business leader needs to do. And then if you go and see throughout, there's ups and downs. Okay? There were periods where, same like what we are experiencing now. Now with COVID-19, it's a challenge for all businesses and you have to face the challenge as well. Uh, during that th the time of SARS, he was facing that challenge as well. And the other thing you see is looking for opportunities all the time. So that's all about business. And one last thing about business today, and I think Alibaba reflects it, is that all business is about technology today, right? So without knowledge in technology, you, you can't, you know, you can't, but it's not just about technology as well, okay? So you don't need to learn everything about technology. You need to know how to use the technology, okay? So that's about business and, and the people in it. So I just want you to, to notice that, okay? Um, so what, so what is business all about? So I brought you to some business places and then I've shown you a, a business organization and I've shown you the people in that business organization. But what exactly is business? Okay? Now most people, when I ask them, what is business? Okay, their answer normally is that, oh, it's products and services. Okay? Uh, you make things and you provide services. But what for? Right? And most of the time people say that the reason why you do it is to make money. Okay, make lots and lots of money, right? So that may be true, and uh, business may be here to make a lot of money, but I wanted to share that business uh, it has the capability to change lives, yeah? And it can change lives in many ways. It can change life in a good way, it can change life in a bad way, all right? So I, I need you to understand business more than just making money, okay? So, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about, first let's start off with the good news, okay? How business have helped us all right. So again, if I were to go back to China, uh, why I'm keep uh, talking about China and not America anymore is because China now is at the forefront of a lot of things. All right. So I'm going to share with you an innovation uh, in business uh, that now uh, they are using technology and how they are using technology in business and as a result, how it has improved our lives. All right. So another short video for you. Hi everyone, I'm Zen Su, a tech reporter at the South China Morning Post and I am in Shanghai, China's economic powerhouse. Today I'm going to spend one day in Shanghai without speaking to anybody. Okay, we're currently in Bingo Box, which is an unmanned convenience store in Shanghai. As you can see, I'm the only person in the store and there are no employees around me. Everything here is completely self-service from entering the store with QR codes, picking out items and then paying for it at the cashier. So we're now in front of Suning's unmanned sports apparel store. This store is so advanced that it's beyond QR codes. It simply scans your face to let you in. Let's check out how it works. Okay, so this is a really cool system whereby it uses facial recognition to guess what product you might like on the Suning platform. Earlier they recommended that I would probably like some earphones. So what's really cool about this store is that there are no cashiers. To pay for your products, you simply come to the front of this scanner. It will detect what merchandise you've picked out and who you are and automatically deduct the money from your Suning account. Hey guys, so after our fried chicken meal, here we are at our last stop in Shanghai for some entertainment. So as you can see, I am in a karaoke booth 
It is very small and sits a maximum of three people, but we can basically sing to our heart's content by either paying through WeChat or putting in some coins. Hey guys, so after a day in Shanghai, not speaking to anybody, it has been actually pretty cool to see all the technology at work in all these unmanned stores. However, it's also a little bit depressing, you know, to know that we can go through an entire day with no human contact. But regardless, it has been a really fun experience for me and I hope that you will come and try it out for yourself if you're ever in Shanghai. Okay, so um, so if you can see that video there, it, it just shows the potential of technology and business. Okay, the the technology is driven by the business. Okay, and imagine that you don't really you know, the store can be open twenty four seven, right? And you don't need uh, you don't don't need to wait for the store to be open. Okay, and it's so it makes our lives so 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 convenient. Of course, what you said was right. Whether you want to go in the store and there's nobody there. Right, um, but the technology, things like technology, things like Facebook and everything, it's all driven by business, and it's helping how our li how we go about in our lives, you know, and improving our lives. So these were ex a little bit of example of the good, right? But I want to also share with you some of the bad things that uh, that results in business. And one of the bad things is, of course, one of the largest uh, industry uh, in the world today is the automobile industry. All right, and in Malaysia is one one major one where we have two two companies producing cars, and you know, for for a period of time we may have a third company producing cars, and the, the number of cars in the road, all right, and how it's impacted us, all right. Again, another short video about this impact. So, so, so again, this is part of part uh, as a result of business, okay? At the automobile industry, and it's created all these, right? So there's a there's a cost involved as well, yeah. It is a bit inconvenient, right? So you have to be mindful that business can be inconveniencing inconvenient us as well. Uh, but having said that, there is also the ugly side to business, right? So it's not just about cost anymore, okay? And one of the biggest uh, challenge with business is that the, the amount of use of plastics, right? So businesses now produce so much. I was in, in um, Mid Valley this morning, and, and if you go to the supermarket in Mid Valley, everything from a single piece of chili you buy, you have to wrap it up in a plastic, all right? And these are all part of what business is doing. So uh, it's actually damaging our environment. And, and to what extent it's damaging our environment, you can see it in this video as well. The exact problem of plastic in ocean is this. Now you come to the plastic graveyard here in the ocean. The washed up remains of a throwaway society. Now you see the enormity of the problem. This isn't litter that's been dropped on the beach. It's come in from the sea recklessly thrown away, distributed on the currents, and then swept ashore. This is the most dangerous, the blue one. It's a single-use plastic. 
and this if it gets down you had it this is all in the mall this is from the mall from people shopping mall. shopping mall this is so prevalent in indian shopping mall afros inspired the world's biggest ever beach clean once a week volunteers clear what they can knowing full well that the next tide will lay a new carpet of plastic so the ocean throws it up ocean pukes out every 2 months 3 months you know and if you don't clean it it will get piled on piled on piled on it's just not convenient for the fishes and the marine creatures and marine birds you know it's their house it's it's there where they belong they live they survive they are crying for justice because we have messed up with their houses worldwide the equivalent of one rubbish truck of plastic waste is being dumped into the ocean every minute by 2050 the trash in the sea is likely to weigh more than all of the fish this is the debris of modern life almost all of it single use plastic a bag used for a few minutes to take the shopping home a straw used for seconds to drink some juice and thrown away with little regard for what happened to it and now being brought back in on the tide. Marine litter is a worldwide problem. This is the River Thames. Once the plastic reaches the North Sea, it'll begin to break down into tiny fragments over many decades, but it never completely disappears. The tiny pieces are called microplastic. It's eaten by sea creatures and ends up in our food. This portion of Marcus's contains about 90 uh, particles of plastic. This scientist carried out the first comprehensive risk assessment shown exclusively to Sky News, which suggests that the microplastic can be absorbed into our bloodstream. Okay. His research shows that by the end of the century, as many as 4,000 tiny fragments a year could build up in the body. I've asked many physicians, colleagues, professors, and, and so on, what does microplastic, what could microplastic do when it gets into our blood system? Uh, and the blunt answer was, we don't know. So we don't know, but in principle, they could accumulate. What I think they could do, what was suggested by physicians, is that perhaps they could accumulate around joints or, or, or certain types of tissue and cause inflammation there. The plastic is already proving fatal for some marine creatures. This bird has died slowly. It's, 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 there's no fat remaining. These are fulmers that have been found dead on the beach. The post-mortem on the stomach isn't for the squeamish. There's quite a bit of stuff in here. I'm not sure what it is, but we'll see. So you can see there's a lot of plastic in here. Goodness me. It is just full of plastic. Yeah, so this gizzard is basically full of plastic. With so much plastic blocking its system, the bird wouldn't have felt hungry and probably starved to death. It's suffering from our mistakes, and uh, it, it's, it's a disgrace for mankind, I think, to, that you find this in animals. Cleaned and carefully laid out, this is the inventory of the bird's gizzard. 18 pieces of plastic weighing half a gram. Scaled up to a human, that's a lunchbox of trash. I would not like my son to have this in his stomach. Our waste, recklessly disposed of, is in the ocean food chain and it's coming back to haunt us. Thomas Moore, Sky News. OK, so um, I do ap apologise for the squeamishness of that, of that uh, picture and, uh, and the, the video. But that demonstrates to you uh, that you know, businesses have a responsibility, right? So, so you know, and if we don't um, fulfil that responsibility, there is a negative impact on society, all right? And, and it's not enough to just say, that, oh, plastic, throw away, and it doesn't affect us, right? It does come back to affect us, okay? So the point I'm trying to make with this uh, three uh, video here is that businesses have the potential to be good, okay? Uh, but sometimes it is quite inconvenient, right? But many times today, it is quite ugly, right? And very negative. So coming back to my question just now, what is business, okay? So can we answer that by saying that it's about making money anymore? My take on it is that no, it cannot be, all right? But I'm a very positive person and I think there's a lot of potential for business. So what is my definition of business today is this is the three, that, one is, Business today must be for improving lives, all right? So if you go in business tomorrow, you must have in your mind that the business will be for good, and I'm going to see how we're going to improve lives, 
All right? And the second thing about business is that you realize when you see Alibaba, yeah, it's not just about Jack Ma, one person. All right? He has to has a have a team of people. So business is also about leading people. Okay? So it's not just if you, if, that's why I ask you whether you're introvert or an extrovert just now. Right? So if you're introvert and you say, I want to do in business because I don't want to deal with people, then you are in the wrong profession. Right? So business is about leading people, helping people. Okay? Of course, fi finally, yes, business is also about making money. Why? Because you have to sustain it. All right? You cannot just rely on charity or for, on government's help. Okay? Business is about self-sustaining. Okay? So that's why it needs to make money as well. So the challenge with business is to combine all three together. All right? How do you improve lives through leading people and, and be sustainable financially? Okay, so you, that's my take on what, what business is, right? So, uh, so with that, then, let's talk about, you know, if you want to study business, you want to go into business, uh, how do you do it? Okay, uh, so now this is about the education part. So the education part is that normally when, to start out in business, and if you are either SPM or IGCSE, first thing you need to consider is you want to go into university. All right. Now, but before you go into the university, unfortunately, you still need to be prepared for university. All right. SPM is not enough. Yeah. So what you normally have to do is you normally get a pre-university qualification. Okay. So you can do our foundation program here or any other pre-university qualification, and only then will you go into university. Now, typically, university degrees are about three years if you want to do business. Okay. And after that, does it mean you become you can go into business directly? Yeah, some people may try, right? But most people will actually gain working experience. That's the first thing you have to do, right? Because when you go in university, you only study from the, mostly from books. Okay, you need to go in and learn how to actually uh, do the real thing in the real business world. So you gain uh, working experience. It, there are several professions in the business as well. You talk about accounting, you talk about finance. So you may want to do some professional qualification as well. Okay? Uh, then that's the, the normal pathway, right? And then you can then start your own business or you can be uh, uh, working in corporation. Now, uh, if you go through this, that's fine. That's the pathway. What do you actually study in this pathway, in the university pathway? And I'm going to suggest that you look for three things when you study that. What are the three things? Number one is knowledge. Okay, so you're going to learn about various things of how to do business. What is, the, what is accounting, what is marketing, what is management, all that stuff. All right? And these things you can learn from the book. You can learn from lectures like this. Yeah? So that's knowledge. Okay? But learning knowledge is not enough. Business is actually a skill as well. So business is like le learning to swim. Okay? If you learn to swim, is it enough to just read a book to say you start with A, B, C and then after that straight you jump into the pool? All right? It's likely that you are going to drown. All right? So these are the two main things that you normally learn from a university program. But I think the third thing that is very important and is linked to what I was saying just now about what is business, it improves lives and you are supposed to lead people to improve lives. Then the third thing is the most important thing, which is learning how to be. Right? What is learning how to be? Yeah? Learning how to be means how to be, be a human person. Okay? How does, what does that mean? It's very philosophical. Right? So how to be means that you are here, you are part of a society. Right? It's not just about, about you. So how do you interact with the larger society? Right? How, how do you see other people? How do you uh, empathize with other people? Okay? And it's also about learning about your yourself, what's your strength. Okay? So it's about empathy, it's about gratitude, it's about resilience, being strong. Okay? You talk about Jack Ma having ups and downs. Right? So it's about resilience, how strong are you in your character. Okay? So it's about building character. Okay? So the, these are the three things that you should be learning in any university program. Okay, so um, I want to now go into, let's start with knowledge and the doing part, the knowing and the doing, right? And what are the different types of knowledge that you will learn? Okay, and just a quick summary all right, of it. The first thing that you will find in business is, the first thing is, people always say, what do you need when you start a business? All right, many people will say you need capital. All right, and most capital are in the form of money. Yeah, so then the question becomes, where can you get the capital from? 
And normally it will be two, norm, two main ways that you can get capital from. One is either you, you get it from your own, your own savings, all right, or your own investment. Okay? And the second uh, uh, source of capital would be if you borrow money. All right? So, and then the next question will become, which is better? Borrow money or use your own investment? Right? So people will, some people will say use your own investment. Why? Because borrow money, you have to pay back and all that. Yeah? But, the, but the challenge with using your own money is that very often our money is very little. Right? So if our money is very little, limited, yeah? in order to go in the business, uh, we are constrained by it. Yeah? We can only do so much. But if we can borrow money and fund our business, we can do a lot more. Right? With the little that we have, we can do a lot more. This is called leveraging. Right? So borrowing money is actually quite good. But the, the, the challenge with borrowing money is that you have to make sure you can pay back. All right? So the, 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 this knowledge about who, who do I borrow, how much can I borrow, what is the ratio between borrowing and using your own investment, you learn that in business under what we call finance. Right? So if you go into finance, you learn about source of money. Where do I source it from? Financial institutions. How many different types of financial institutions there are. Okay? So that's uh, finance. Right? So you, can, you will study finance in business. That's, after that, once you have capital, the next thing you want to know is, okay, so I want to come up with a product that I want to sell. Okay? How do I come up with this product? Okay? The, the, the most important thing that you must always refer to when you come up with the product is knowing who your customer is. So you must understand your customer, right? Once you understand your customer, you can design your product for your customer. And then you need to determine how much to sell to your customer. What's the price to this, right? So the pricing and where to sell it. Because if I sell a packet of nasi lemak in the roadside, I can only sell it for one ringgit 50 cent. But if I go and sell it in a posh restaurant, I can sell it for 15 ringgit. But it's the same nasi lemak with the same ikan bilis, right? But depending on who I'm selling to, I can price it differently. Now, all these things about understanding the, your, your customer and you know, looking at your product and how to sell, how to promote, it's basically called marketing and consumer behavior, all right? So that's another thing that you can actually do in business as well. Now, once you've got that, you've got your product, and you know what to sell, when to sell, and all that, the next thing you have to do is make the product, right? Now, it sounds simple, well, you just go and make the product, okay? But it's not as simple as that, right? Okay, first, to make a product means you've got to find out what materials that you use. Then after that, you've got to find out where the materials come from. If the materials come from China most of the time, then you've got to make sure you're going to have a reliable supplier in China. And then how long does it take from it to come to your factory here? And talk about your factory. Where do you want to build the factory? And how do you build the factory? How do you design the factory? So you've got a pile of raw materials here. How do you assemble it to become a phone? How many people work in this part, this part, this part? All right? So all these are called operations management. Okay? And how do you design your operations itself? So all these you learn in, 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 in business as well. So operations management and marketing. Then you start your business. You sell and you make. You make and you sell, right? Then after that, what you need to know? You need to know whether you are making money or not, right? And that's where the accountants come in, okay? The accountants is basically preparing a report card, all right? And telling you that, oh, you're doing well here. You know, you're making profit for this product. This product is not making profit. So if this pro product is not making profit, how can you improve on it? So that's what accountant does, right? Um, and finally, final part of it, okay, and to me the most important part of it is there's something missing here, which is you need people, all right? And you need a strong team of people. Have you watched Avengers, right? You all have watched Avengers. If you watch the first Avengers, what happened in the first Avengers was you've got all these very all these superheroes, they're all fantastic, very powerful. But when you ask them to work in a team, they cannot work together. Alright? Someone has to become a leader, and someone has got to motivate them, and someone has got to organize them. Right? So this this is what we call management. Management and organizational behavior. 
And they're also, all of this is part of what you study in business. So what do you study in business? You study, let's go backwards, right? The first thing is you, you need to how to motivate and manage a team, okay? Then you need to know how to report what you're doing, how to organize yourself and how to sell yourself, all right? And finally, where to get the capital, okay? So that's in a nutshell what business is all about, all right? So, um, so that's what areas that you can specialize in. Now, uh, in, in Herald Watt, let me just tell you a little bit of Herald Watt and how we address those specializations. Uh, so we have a couple of programs in accounting, all right? So we have two programs, one in accounting, the other one in, in, in finance that we offer. So if you want, you can do those programs as well. Uh, we also have a series of programs that in general business, in, in marketing, operations management, in management. All right. uh, that's essentially is what we call the international business management degree. We've got specializations in HRM. HRM is human resource management. Human resource management is how to motivate that team of superheroes that you have. All right. And then you have enterprise. Enterprise is about how to start up businesses. Okay. And marketing is about how to sell, how to position yourself, how to price the goods. All right. And we also have a degree called Bachelor of Business Administration. Okay. And finally, we also have a psychology degree that is linked to business. All right. It is called a BSc in, uh, in psychology with management. That has got, that's grounded in psychology, uh, then made with a major in management in business. Okay. So these are the different types of programs that we have. Um, I also want to talk about an additional thing that is, that is unique to, to Harold Watt University in Malaysia. Okay? And this is related to the part where I say, where I said knowledge, doing, and being. That's the three things you look for in a degree. All right? Knowledge and doing is about all those business, management, marketing, accounting, finance. Right? Where is the being component? Right? How do we teach you to know yourself, to know your strength, to be grateful for who you are, to have the resilience to go through tough times, right? And to, to also take on challenges, okay? And we call it the Empower Program. And this Empower Program is, a, is embedded into all our degree programs. And you, you start doing it in your first year, okay? And the first thing you normally start doing is we, we, we let you explore your emotional intelligence. We help you develop your emotional intelligence and your resilience. All right. One of the things that we ask you all to do uh, when you come in the first year is we ask you to, to tell us who you are and what's your purpose in life. What do you want to achieve that would impact other people, improving lives? Right? How would you want to improve other people's lives? Right? So that's, that's what we do in the Empower program. And over the, the next two, two, uh, two, three years, what we also help you to do in the Empower program is also to take on leadership roles. All right, in the degree program. We also give you more people skills, how to communicate, how to motivate people. Okay? We also teach you about entrepreneurship, innovation, and creativity. Uh, we also talk about critical thinking and decision making. And finally, we you know, look, give you industry experience and all that. Okay? So all these are part of our Empower program. Okay? So that part is about being. Okay? So these are the three things that we cover in our degree program. Um, the finally, one of the, another very um, unique thing that uh, Harold Watt University does is that I, t I mentioned to you our three main campuses. We have Edinburgh, we have Dubai, and we have Putrajaya, Malaysia. Okay? When you enter into our degree program, when you study any of our degree program, they are all identical over the three campuses. All right? So what that means is that if you wanted to, you can, spend, you can start your degree first year in Malaysia, and then go to Dubai for another year, second year, and then finish your degree in Edinburgh. You get the same certificate, all right? And people from Edinburgh does the same as well, right? So some of our Scottish students from Edinburgh will start in Edinburgh, they spend a year in Dubai maybe, and finally they come to Malaysia and finish their degree, all right? This is the program where we call Go Global. Yeah? So on this campus, we have quite a number of our Scottish students studying here. Yeah, so there's a very multicultural environment that we have. And this is very important because in a globalized world, you, you must learn how to interact with people from different, different cultures. 
All right? We provide you with that uh, environment. Um, yeah, so, so that in a nutshell is what I was trying to uh, uh, share with you today. So if I could just summarize it, I, what I wanted to share with you is uh, a very positive view of business. Right? To go into business is a fantastic thing if you decide to go into it. But I want you to realize that business has significant impact on our lives, everyone's lives. All right? And therefore, I hope you would take a perspective that business is here to improve our lives. All right? And you also need to be a strong leader. Okay? So you're going to be leading people in order to do that. Yes? Yeah, okay, by the way, you also will make some money out of it. Lah. Yeah, uh, so so that's the the take on business, and and also in the second part is what we offer here. And remember, uh, wherever you go, if you're looking for any university education, look for three things that you must learn, right? So the knowledge is very important. Uh, of course, applying that knowledge in doing the things that you are supposed to learn how to do is very important. But finally, the third thing, the most important thing, is you grow up in this three years. You you must grow up and learn who you are. Right? and then go out and change the world. Okay? So that's, that's my, my, my uh, sharing this, this, this afternoon. Okay? And I thank you for your attention. Um, do you have any questions? Can you just elaborate on the doing part? Like yep. Then give examples what that you do here. Okay, so what we do is we, we do a lot, of, um, so a lot of case studies. Well, okay. Let's talk about so all these specializations that you have, right? So doing means a lot of application and, and case studies. So you just don't learn stuff. So it's not just about reading the book, right? So there's a lot of problem-based learning that you go with. So we give you cases and you try and discuss the case and how to solve this challenge that we have, right? So, so it's about applying that. So in accounting, for example, we just don't talk about double entry, but we ask you to practice on the double entry part of it. So that's the doing part of it. Well, we, they, they can. So the part where um, in, uh, on the Empower program, uh, if, the bus if a student wants to start a business on campus, we can help them, right? So we can advise them. Yeah. So uh, that's something we, we are also uh, doing. In terms. So we can do that, but you don't have to go to the extent of starting a business, right? Um, you can run projects, for example. Okay? That also can be done. Okay? So it's really applying your knowledge, not just reading it from the textbook. Yes? So if somebody is um, uh, like, like him, like, mm. yeah, an introvert, yep. so do you think like, you know, they can actually, have you seen them like? Yes, yes, before? yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. I think, you know, I'm a case in point, and, you know, I, as I say, I'm an introvert. But you, you will be, you'll be challenged to do it. Okay, so for example, one of the ways is that we, we do a lot of group work Okay, so, so in, in the class, as part of your learning, you will have to do a lot of group work where you do some research and you do presentation. So you will have to come out and, and, and ex experience being an extrovert. There's, there's, you, know, you, you can't hide behind it, right? So, so whether it can, yes, there's a lot of students who have done it. Okay? And, and of course, initially it's tough, but you, know, you will have a very safe environment here to do it. Do you have a question? <laughs> right? Is you okay? Do you agree with all the things I've shared? You, don't, you, have, you can disagree with them. And that's the other thing, okay? You, you, you can disagree, okay? I think this is, I don't know where, I think it's, it should be across all university education. So it's not like your school days where it's like the teacher come and they tell you this and you just listen, 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 and you just nod your head, right? You're supposed to question, you're supposed to be critical. Okay, that's, why, that's what critical is. Critical means that you read something, and you think about it and say, does it make sense to you? Okay, and you ask the question, you evaluate it in your head. Right? So that's, that's, that's education, yeah? Education is not, it's not just absorption of information. It's about evaluation of information. Okay? So I think Malaysian, sometimes in our classrooms, I don't get a lot of, uh, you know, from Asian students are, are rather quiet, so we only have to push you all, yeah? Um, so, so that's the other thing about university education, is to really uh, be critical, okay? So I think that, that's it then, all the best to you, yeah?
Thank you for, for listening. Thank okay, you. thank you.